Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. With our high rate of divorce and cheating, it's easy to become cynical about love. But for counterbalance, as we approach Valentine's Day, here are some eminence more positive yet realistic words of wisdom, plus my yes ands and yes buts. In that I am sharing this with you on Martin Luther King Day, it feels appropriate to start with his wise statement, quote, I have decided to stick with love. Hate is too great a burden. End quote. If you're feeling hatred toward your romantic partner, is that a sign to leave the relationship? To look to improve it? Or to accept the person, focusing on his or her positives? And of course, King's statement might wisely be applied not just to romantic love, but more broadly. <clears throat> Psychiatrist Carl Menninger wrote, Love cures people, both the ones who give it and the ones who receive it. Even stronger, yet probably still true, is the biblical assertion, better to give than to receive. Now let us descend from the lofty ideal to practical ideas that can help make love work on earth, even if the relationship wasn't made in heaven. William Shakespeare wrote, Kindness in women, not their beauteous looks, shall win my love. I would expand that to say that whatever the gender, kindness trumps looks especially after love's first fire starts to fade. The bard deserves more ink, he wrote. They do not love that, I'm sorry, they do not love that do not show their love. Indeed, it is more important to produce than to profess. That last sentence was mine. I don't want to attribute that to, to the bard. It's my own humble offering. Anyway, actor Angelica Houston said, I don't think it's necessarily healthy to go into relationships as a needy person. Better to go in with a full deck, end quote. Her colleague Jennifer Aniston agrees, adding a metaphor. She writes, A relationship isn't going to make me survive. It's the cherry on top. And I agree. It's usually wise to defer pursuing a serious relationship until you're solid enough to not overreact to relationships' inevitable challenges. Gloria Steinem, feminist activist, wrote, Far too many people are looking for the right person instead of trying to be the right person. Right. So much easier to point fingers and urge others to change when it's often wiser to focus on changing yourself, something over which you have more control. If you do want to try to alter your partner, author Steve Miraboli writes, I find the best way to love someone is not to change them, but instead help them reveal the greatest version of themselves, end quote. So what might you ask of your partner that would make him or her flower? For example, my wife is emotionally intelligent, both for my own good and to help her, quote, reveal the greatest version of herself. When I have an interpersonally sticky situation, I often ask her what she thinks I should say or do. Now I want to offer some limitations of love, some quotes of, about love's limitations. Psychotherapist Fritz Perls wrote, you are you and I am I. And if by chance we find each other, it's beautiful. If not, it can't be helped. That feels too uncompromising to me. In a good relationship, yes, we should retain our foundational self, but it's often wise to adapt at least a bit of it to fit our partner. I'm more comfortable with the following related assertions. The painter, the Indian painter, Rabindranath Tagore wrote, love does not claim possession but gives freedom. And, especially, Leo Buscalia's, don't smother each other, no one can grow in the shade. Writer Maya Angelou said, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. Yes, some people will disclose weaknesses in hopes of being accepted despite them, but if those weaknesses feel like too much to handle, pull on ropes of restraint and tactfully end the relationship. Philosopher Henri Frederic Amiel wrote, to marry unequally is to suffer equally. Yes, while the cliché is that opposites attract, it's usually easier to get along when you have similar intellectual and emotional styles, similar cultural backgrounds, and income. Yeah, income. Greatly disparate incomes leads to power imbalance that can lead to much fighting. For example, I earn almost all the income. That gives me some power over how much and on what you can, sp how much you spend and on what you spend. Actor Catherine Hepburn said, Sometimes I wonder if men and women really suit each other. Perhaps they should live next door and just visit now and then. 
My wife and I have been together for 46 years, and for the last 20, we've lived 40 miles apart and see each other a few times a week. We agree that's improved our marriage. Of course, such an arrangement is not for everyone, but most of our friends say they're jealous. And finally, Buddha said, He who loves 50 people has 50 woes. He who loves no one has no woes. It's beyond audacious for me to criticize the Buddha, but I will anyway. Of course, love often brings woes, but it also brings color to an often beige existence. My two cents? In most cases, romantic relationship is but one of the wise life's core components. Worthwhile work and passion-inducing avocation, whether creative, athletic, or volunteering, are two other pillars of the life well-led. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemco. I welcome your thumbs up and accept your thumbs down. I uh, look forward to your comments all the time and uh, love it if you hit the share button below and share it on your social media. That way my efforts hopefully yield more benefit. And of course, I'm flattered if you subscribe to my channel. In any event, I do thank you for watching. I am Marty Nemco.